It's okay. Hi guys, so it's been a little while since I've done a vlog, but I wanted to check in, one, with some reading of mine, some life update stuff, but also I feel like since the last time I did a vlog, the world is going crazy about the coronavirus and everything, so I thought I'd give you a little update about those things and also check in with all of you to see how you're doing. I know a lot of you live in all sorts of different places around the world, so I'm very curious to know what's it like, where you're living. I hope all of you are staying healthy. I know some of you are probably super tired of hearing it and you're like, ah, oh, great, another thing talking about it. But because it's a vlog and it's a little more personal and everything, some of you may know that I have a father who is a, who's quite old to have a daughter my age. I'm gonna be 27, my dad is 73. And being an older person, I definitely am not wanting him to get sick. My husband, Sean, a lot of you see, see Sean quite often in my videos, but Sean was actually sick last week, quite sick. And a lot of you know I was sick at the beginning of the year for a while. And there was a joke, because I filmed a couple of videos while I was sick, and this was just right when coronavirus was starting to be known. And I remember a couple of people being like, oh, you have coronavirus. And at the time I was like, no. But now I'm kind of like, did I? I don't know if I did. I don't know if this is what my husband just had. But I think a lot of us, I don't know what it's like where you live, but a lot of us are experiencing chaos at our local grocery stores. And Sean works for a grocery store. And so he was sick and missed three days of work. Then when he went back to work, they made him stay really, well, not really late, but they made him stay late the days that he came back. And then they scheduled him on a Sunday, which they rarely do. My poor husband is very stressed. He was just sick and then now he's stressed. And uh, I think for both of us, as far as our, our physical health and everything, we're not too concerned. But because I have an older father, I was looking into it because at first I'm like, I feel like people are overreacting. And then I looked into it and I'm like, um... My dad's old and he's kind of the group that is more susceptible to, to having this be a more severe thing. So I just told him, I was like, hey dad, <laughs> um, I think you should not go out very much uh, for a little bit and if you need groceries, you should write them down and I'll come out and I'll go grocery shopping for you. This does mean that every now and then if I need to skip a video because it's a day that I would film but my dad needs me to go to the grocery store, I don't live right down the street from him. He lives in another, uh, I guess technically another city, but he lives 50 minutes away from me. So it's a little bit of a drive to get to him. I'd have to go out and shop for him. Just letting you guys know, keeping you updated that hopefully I can still put up videos really frequently, but if I miss some, that's probably why. This also means that if I need to set aside time to go help my dad instead of reading, then I'm not going to read instead of going to help out my dad. I'll still probably listen to audiobooks on the way to his house and everything. But as of right now, I am reading Dead House Gates, which is the second book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. And I know I take forever to read those books because I've only read one so far. And I know it takes me forever, but it's because these books are really dense and there's a lot going on. And I hate not actually paying attention to books and these books I think require a lot of concentration and so I'm really trying to make sure I know what's going on. I started the book and I must say I had just finished Steelheart which is a young adult book by Brandon Sanderson then I jumped into this one and I really didn't care for Steelheart. It's like the only Sanderson I've ever really not liked but then picking up Malazan, Malazan I was like oh like this is I forgot that Steven Erickson like is a is good at the actual craft of writing I feel I don't know, I just think, I remember saying in the review for Gardens of the Moon that I feel like his vocabulary is fantastic. It's just that the storytelling is kind of not what I'm in love with necessarily, but a lot of you have said that that series gets better as it goes. The first one isn't really that great. So I'm not that far into Dead House Gates, but it was actually really nice to pick it up 
after reading a book I didn't I didn't really care for that much. I'm also starting The Night Circus. That is March's buddy read book. And Sean is going to probably be updating you on his thoughts because our buddy reads, we are both reading the same book, but then at the end of the month, we'll do like a dual review chat where we haven't talked to each other up until that point, but we'll talk to you guys in vlogs or over on the app by Zans and to make sure that we're not spoiled with each other's thoughts. This month, Sean is going to be talking about the night circus over on by Zans. If you feel like chatting or getting to see his thoughts, that's where they'll be. I tried to pick up the book Spell Hacker. This is one that I checked out from my local library and it's a newer release. I thought it sounded really fun. It's a high story, but I'm just not really feeling it right now. I think I might take it back to the library and try another time because it just isn't, it's not clicking for me. And I know I, I barely got into it. I got maybe like 35 pages in or something, which is nothing. I just feel like at this time right now, it's not really working for me. So I think I need to come to it at a later date. But in the meantime, I had requested the book, uh, The Shadows Between Us, which this is an anticipated release because I thought it sounded hilarious. I thought this either is gonna be really fun or really stupid. And the premise is, we follow a promiscuous gold digger. Basically, it's this girl who's planning on seducing the king of the land so that he will want to marry her, she can become queen, and then she's gonna kill him. That's the idea, except she realizes some other people might wanna kill him too, so now she has to work to keep him alive long enough to marry him and kill him herself. <laughs> That's the premise. So I wasn't sure when I picked it up, but I picked it up because it came in at my library, and I gotta say, so far, super entertaining. It's ridiculous. You kind of just have to accept that she's a terrible person, but that's the point. You know what I mean? Like the character, for those of you that like First Law, the character Giselle, such a piece of garbage, but you kind of start to enjoy following him because you're like, this guy. But then you're like, you, you know that the author knows that that guy sucks and he, he sucks, like you just know it. And so when you read about him, you're like, ugh, but then it starts to become entertaining. I feel like this, is that that's what this book is. That's it for now for a little update on my reading and then personal life stuff. But anyway, let's get to the stuff everybody actually cares about in vlogs, which is clips of Luna Bear. Good morning. <laughs> What? So Luna knocked all the cushions off the couch, put her food dish on one couch, and the puzzle I was doing, there are pieces on the ground. That's one of the couch cushions, by the way. And she knows she's in trouble because she ran down the stairs. Luna Bear, you can come upstairs, we forgive you. It's okay, come here. Yeah, it's okay. Come on. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, there you go. It's okay. We forgive you. Oh. Oh. Yay. Oh. <laughs> Luna, are you sorry? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, doggy? Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> Luna beer. Do you have a tickled spot back there? <laughs> so a little reading update. I finished The Shadows Between Us and I found it highly entertaining throughout the whole, <laughs> throughout the whole thing. It was kind of exactly what I was expecting it to be when I heard the premise. So I think if you go into it expecting it to be, oh my gosh, Luna. Ow, hold on. <laughs> anyway, I saw that this is described as a Slytherin story, which means nothing to me because I'm not a Harry Potter person. But if you are a Harry Potter person, that probably means something to you. And I think 
that if you're looking for something where it's like kind of got a fair amount of a romantic subplot as well as a very wicked main character who is not really a good person but they're entertaining and they it's not like the story is trying to make it out like oh she's just misunderstood no she's got a lot of her own desires that she is going after throughout the story and a lot of the other characters it's kind of a murder mystery because there's somebody who had killed the king's parents and then the same person's after the king and you don't know who it is so there's that element to the story there's the fact that the character she's kind of terrible and the king is an interesting character also but there's other characters throughout the book that are not quite like her and so you get a, a a lot of different personalities in this book. It was fun. It was a good time. It's a standalone, one and done, but it's not really cutesy. And also I would say, not trying to tell anybody how to feel or anything, but this story does have a lot of, uh, I would say more mature themes. It never gets extremely explicit and detailed or anything, but it does have some things in it that maybe you would like knowing that it's got that. Like I said, nothing explicit, not like there's just tons of really detailed scenes or anything like that. But I think some people appreciate knowing that. So if, hopefully that's helpful for you. Another little reading update. I started The Night Circus and so far I'm not all that far into it, but I am intrigued. The writing, I was expecting to be very dense because of the way I've heard other people talk about this book. And so far, I think that the writing is not dense at all. I'm not far enough in where I'm gonna have tons of things to say about it, but I did want to note that I downloaded the audiobook so that I can read the physical and listen. And I gotta say, one of my biggest pet peeves is when audiobook chapters don't really line up with chapters in the book because the chapters in the book aren't really, they don't really have chapter one, chapter two, where it's a very distinct, obvious break for the audiobook. So the audiobook just has random, you know, it will say chapter seven in the audiobook, and that is just a random page. That's not necessarily the end of a chapter. I know that that has nothing to do with the actual content of the book. But, oh man, does that always frustrate me. That's pretty much it for my reading. I did want to let you guys know that uh, I have started playing God of War 4. I know I'm so late to the party, but that game is beautiful and Sean has such a man crush on Kratos. Like <laughs> before we went to bed last night, we were both trying to replicate his voice and we're like, boy. Come boy. And we discovered that I'm actually better at doing a Kratos impression. The graphics are great. It's a good time. I'm really enjoying that game. So if you guys like video games, I'm sure you've heard about God of War 4, but I, I, it gets two thumbs up from me so far. And then I played the Final Fantasy VII remake demo and I am freaking out. I, I had a post about it on my communities tab about how I had to hold back tears and I'm not even exaggerating. I literally went to play it and then <laughs> I heard the music, the da da da, and I was like, oh my gosh. And my husband was like, this is adorable. You're such a nerd. <laughs> but uh, it was such a big part of my childhood and I didn't have the best childhood. And so that game, I feel like, was very meaningful to me, but I didn't really ever get to share it with anybody later in life because the original, is, it doesn't have great replay value. It's old and it's the graphics are terrible. There's no voice acting. So playing that remake and knowing I'm gonna get to share that with my husband. Oh man, it just, the nostalgia. I actually have a little giveaway going on on my Instagram for a Sephiroth candle. So if you wanna enter, enter that over on Instagram, I'll have the, I'll have my Instagram linked down below. But anyway, I hope all of you are staying healthy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.